Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are reviewing a sealed ecosphere I built 550 days ago. This ecosphere was part land and part water, and I did include bladder snails and a few other species. If you have not seen it already, you should watch the build video linked in the description below. Uh, here's a short rundown. We added some oak leaves, some sweet gum leaves, a uh, retaining wall, a uh, slice of cucumber, some spiderwort, some duckweed, and we closed it up nice and tight. And yeah, we uh, sat back and watched for 550 days. Yeah, so 549 uh, <laughs> today. But here we are, and we are looking at the shelf. This is a shelf that I've built in in an eastern facing window. This is where we keep most of the larger ecospheres. And I do have to use a flashlight to examine this one. The same flashlight I used uh, back in January of last year. So it's a good flashlight. <laughs> uh, but I do see a lot of growth up here. We have a lot of moss reaching up out of the water. We have a significant layer of biofilm as well up above the water's surface. I think that's really interesting and unexpected. Looking a bit deeper, uh, though the tank is very dark, uh, with the addition of the flashlight, we can see in there very clearly. The water column is entirely clear, and just a little yellow from some tannins in those leaves, I believe. Looking at the substrate, I do see three planaria hanging out. Uh, these little planaria, they are widely hated in the aquarium hobby. Uh, but in a sealed ecosystem like this, they're just another link in the food chain. And if you look at the substrate, you'll see a bunch of little green specks down here. That is water meal, and I don't know why it's down there. I don't know how that happens. If you watch the video very carefully, you'll see a few pieces of water meal just slowly sinking to the bottom. Uh, nice and green and alive, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, we have a lot of bladderwort in here, and I believe it's eaten many of our microfauna. Uh, but we also have some more planarians up here, and a bladder snail. Yeah, that bladder snail has survived in here for 550 days, uh, while being surrounded by planaria. And uh, they're not exactly a friendly, cooperative species. So that's really cool, that's a huge achievement. Uh, not only is that bladder snail alive, uh, they haven't done the tiny um, miniature dwarfing thing that they usually do in our sealed projects. We do have a ton of bladderworts. I believe that's what this is. You can see a few of the little uh, nodules here and there. And uh, while looking at the bladderwort, I found this amazing individual here. Look at that bladder snail, you guys. Uh, check out the starry night pattern on the skin, that speckled pattern which is uh, really beautiful, reminiscent of our pond snails, but not our bladder snails. Very unusual to see it like this. And uh, this guy has a, a cute little face, but he is eating algae right now. He is actively eating algae right before our eyes. And this is the food chain in this ecosystem. Algae and detritus act as the base, and uh, it goes from there. The beautiful snail is really happy to see him. So now this jar on the back side, this is the side that gets all the sunlight, is completely covered with plants and algae and bacteria. Most people would say this is unsightly and uh, you know we got to clean this out, but this is the system, the engine that powers uh, the ecosystem. This engine allows all of those animals to live and breathe and find food and in return, they produce CO2 and waste for the plants and algae to consume. It's a beautiful cycle. Now, up here at the surface, we do have some growth. I believe that is the spiderwort that I added a long time ago uh, during setup. And we also have uh, this interesting pattern here. It looks like some fungus has crawled up here with the moss as it tried to escape the water. A lot of the moss is wilted and yellow. And I think that's from the water mites consuming it. 
Now, as far as it being a polydarium would go, our little island is there on the uh, on the left, and it is almost invisible. It's basically buried under plants, under about a three quarters of an inch of plant growth. So our island is in there. It's just really hidden. And uh, looking at the success of this project, we do have a handful of bladder snails in here, uh, enough to continue a family line for quite a while. I didn't see any eggs, but that would make sense as they would only lay a very few. Uh, they don't have a lot of food available. And uh, no doubt the planaria would be trying to eat their eggs. So I'm sure these guys have some unique strategies to deal with that. Overall, the jar is successful. We have maintained life in here. And I do believe the polydarium is the ultimate version of a sealed ecosphere. I don't know how many other people are out there building part land, part water, sealed ecosystems. Um, maybe there's a bunch. <laughs> uh, but this is the only project I've seen that really looks like this, you know, other than my other polydarium in the background, which is much older. But I do believe we've stumbled into something here, and I've seen a few things that worked out really well. Having that wide variety of plants, including some land plants, uh, seems to have definitely increased the uh, quality of life inside. So for our next Eco Sundays video, we will be building a snail reactor. And I'll give you more details on that uh, in the next episode. But here is a little update. I have started the project. And uh, we do have some pothos now. I am working pothos into like all of my builds. I hope you guys don't mind. It's a really cool plant. But uh, yeah, that's it for Bucket Ponds today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I know this episode of Eco Sundays was a little different. Uh, we looked at a confined, captured ecosystem instead of a wild one. I think that was still pretty cool. And I'll be back next Sunday with the next episode. Thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. You guys are legendary. And I can't say it enough. Thank you.